Welcome in everybody to Keeping Up with Marshall County Athletics presented by Wentzel's Oyster House in Gunnersville. Make sure to come by Wentzel's up here in Gunnersville and uh, eat some great food, enjoy a great atmosphere. And uh, they got outdoor patio. It's getting that time of year where it's perfect setting to go sit out there, enjoy some food and TVs all over the place. You can come enjoy sports. So uh, appreciate Wentzel's Oyster House, their sponsorship with us here with Average Joe Sports Talk this week. With Keeping Up Marshall County Athletics, we are joined by the Douglas Eagles and Coach Brandon Lyles. Coach, uh, you know, you look at the season for you guys this year. It was a great start to the year. You mm -hmm. get off to a 2-0 and start, and then the schedule really ramped up for you guys. Yeah. And you guys have played some really good competition, but you've been in a lot of these football games as well. And so yes, kind of just talk about this season so far and, and really what has stood out to you about this year's team. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a challenge as far as adversity starting 2-0. and um, Felt good about our roster going in through the summer all the way into fall. And, uh, you know, we've had some unfortunate injuries that started from the first before we played Plainview in a, in a fall jamboree. From that point on, we've, we've <clears throat> I think we're down to eight starters right now. Uh, and at Douglas, you know, when you talk about eight starters, that really kind of could be 12 to 14 because a lot of them play both ways. So we've had to deal with those injuries, uh, deal with adversity. Uh, and, you know, I told those guys the other day, we were a few plays here and there from being five and one. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the whole outlook could be different. Um, but the one thing about the group that I have, especially these seniors, I almost feel like they've kind of got a raw deal with all this, the injuries, but they never stop playing. Uh, they never complain. They're always there to show up, uh, workouts in the morning, watching film. Um, and, you know, the other day we lost a tough one against Sardis. I did not feel like anybody hanged their head and stopped playing the whole time. And, you know, that's one of those deals where it could get hard on you. And a lot of, a lot of kids in the past I've seen, you know, kind of give up. But I don't feel like our group has. So. You know, a lot of people a lot of times love to say, you know, hey, you are what your record, you yeah. know, says you are. But I feel like you guys are an example of that not necessarily always being the case when it's you true. look at you know, what you guys have kind of done this year, mm -hmm. and the, especially the quality of teams that you right. guys have played. Yeah, I mean, you play the region that we're in. Uh, from top to bottom, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, you know, from Gunnersville, that's, they're, they're seeming like they've always got it rolling. Scottsboro, Arab, Sardis this year, who's much improved. Boaz, who, you know, Coach Sullivan up there does a tremendous job. So every week you have to prepare. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to go up in there and out-athlete anybody. Um, and even if you had the better team athletically, you're still going to prepare because you're so well coached, every one of them. So, you know, it's been, it's been tough, but again, we're not, we're not quitting. We're not stopping. We, we've still got several games ahead of us that our kids are excited to play. You talk about, you know, Scottsboro, um, obviously they run an offense that's yeah. a lot different than what you see every week, yes, you know, when you play other teams. So how, how different was that week kind of preparing for that and these kids? Well, we actually played Yeah, yeah. We, we're off this week uh, because, you know, the cross will do. I don't, the cross, yeah, the, yeah. So sorry, um, and then after that, we play Scottsboro mm -hmm. next week. So yeah, you get you know time to try to prepare for that. We actually played Plainview, who runs the triple option and the, and the jamboree, to try to prepare for that. It's just something you don't see all the time, and you have to be so disciplined um, to be able to stop the fullback, the quarterback, and then obviously the pitch. So you know we we know we got our hands full. Coach Bell up there does a tremendous job, but I, I feel like again our kids are ready to prepare and are excited for the challenge. Having an extra week to prepare for that, how much does that help? It should help. You know, I mean, as far as being able to put in a game plan and and being able to try to execute that, and that's kind of the the luxury in a sense we kind of had last year as we were able to prepare for that and, and lost a tough one against them at our place. Um, but again, our kids are they're ready for the challenge. When you look at them, you know, you look at the last couple of weeks, obviously their, their scoring output's kind of gone down just a little bit even, you know, mm -hmm. early in the year they were scoring 50, mm -hmm. 60 points a game. Right. What do you think, have, do you think people are starting to maybe figure out some of the stuff they're doing or what, what do you think? You is, know, the option is, is kind of what it is where if everything's rolling, it's very difficult to stop. Uh, I think, you know, I'm not sure yet on Gunnersville, but I think they may have put the ball on the ground a few times uh, and get behind the chains and that kind of offense, it makes it difficult. But when they're rolling, they're extremely difficult to defend. When you look at this week, obviously you're looking at the next opponent and all that. How much time are y'all spending on yourselves and just saying, you know, hey, we're, we're trying to improve ourselves and well, kind of go back to this preseason? Yes, you know? and that's what our focus will be this week is trying to get back to doing, you know, being fundamentally sound, um, you know, trying to find guys that can help us. That's what I was talking about earlier. You know, we had several injuries, um, and we've had a lot of guys having to play both ways, not coming off the field. We've got a lot of younger guys that need to step up going forward that's going to be able to help me uh, the rest of the way out. So that needs to be a focus this week. Who can help me and who I can rely on when these guys need a spell. 
Another thing people don't consider with some of these injuries, it affects special teams and stuff yes, as well. Sir. How much have y'all had to kind of really move around people yeah, on special teams? I think these stuff? guys that are here with me will be able to tell you, you know, a lot of them don't come off the field. They, they're playing every special team. Um, and I know that's tough in 5A football, but we are where we are right now. I know Monday we go into the room <clears throat> to talk to them, watch film. And I had about 15 to 20 just varsity guys that I've been relying on right now. And you talk about 5A, that's not ideal. But again, I don't hear these kids complaining. They just keep showing up, trying to get better. So. You know, and you talk about these kids showing up every day, trying to get better and not quitting on the season, things like that. How good of an example is that for these younger guys and, you know, what you're trying to get this program back to being here? Oh, it's, it's great. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, we've got two eighth graders that we've moved up that I feel like can help us. Um, and the older guys have really tried to take them under their wing and try to show them the right way to do stuff. And I hope that it will continue to lead that way because these, these seniors have been with me since their freshman year. Um, and just watching them grow, develop as football players and young men has been exciting to me. Um, and I feel like, you know, even when they graduate, they'll still be involved with the program in some sense. So. Mathematically, is there still an opportunity to get into the yeah, playoffs? Yeah, I mean, we would have to, you know, we've got to beat Gunner, or not Gunner, we've got to beat Boaz and Scottsboro and then have some help on some other things. Uh, so it's not completely out of the equation. We know we're on an uphill battle. We've got to help, uh, have help with the, our, our, our non region games. Hopefully, you know, Susan Moore keeps winning games mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So mathematically, no, uh, but, you know, we've got to take care of ourselves and try to. It'll take one game at a time, and, and it starts with Scottsboro. Yeah, that's what I was going to kind of add. I mean, it's got to be hard to get your guys to say, hey, don't worry about all right. the other stuff, because if right. we don't do what we're supposed to do, then it really doesn't that's matter. Exactly and has right. that kind of been the message? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the message going forward is, you know, we take them one game at a time, and I feel like we have. Um, you know, we lost a tough one a couple weeks ago against West Point um, in overtime, and uh, would have been easy for a lot of our young men to just say, hey, we're folding it in. This is, you know, this is kind of it for us. But I didn't feel that way. I felt like they got right back off the mat and played against Sardis, lost a tough one again. Mm -hmm. But here we are again. we got to fight through adversity and, and try to get through it. I was going to ask you, like, what are a couple of moments this year that have really stood out to you about this group and just the character <clears throat> and the makeup of this group? Uh, I know against ARAB, um, they come to our place. And, you know, ARAB really put it on us last year. Um, very physical team. They still are. Uh, our young men went toe to toe with those guys, had every opportunity to win it, <clears throat> and it was a good, hard fought game. You know, you look over across the field, and Arabs around 100 players, you know, and we're over there rolling with about 50 kids, and um, and out of those 50 kids, what I talked about is some of the upperclassmen having to play all the time. But our kids, you know, they keep fighting. Again, I talk about them playing special teams, offense, defense, where somebody like Arab. You know, when their offense goes off the field, they're all over there watching film, you know, and they're not having to play that defense. So I was very proud of their fight. Uh, again, you know, going in before this past game, we had lost two games, a combined eight points, and then lost 35 to 21 against Sardis. You know, had a pick six right there under a minute left that kind of changed that score. Uh, so, you know, it's, there's not a question of whether they're fighting or not. And that's, that's all I can ask as a head coach, show up every day to try to get better and fight. Is the next step in your mind, I guess, for you to get this program where you want it is getting more kids out and building up that depth? Yeah, and I feel like we have. Um, I feel like our ninth and tenth grade group, there's a lot of them out. Um, but again, I need more of them to start stepping up to help me on varsity on Friday nights. Uh, so it has gotten better. Um, you know, my first year, I've, I've said it, but my first year, I think we finished the season with 19 kids. And that very, uh, very last game against Pisgah, I think my outside linebacker coach was playing running back. My DB coach was playing quarterback. You know, we were just trying to give our guys a look, and that's where we were. Um, but I think that has grown in a sense where, you know, we had a little success. Our, our year two made the playoffs. Uh, so I think that's helped us, and it's just continued to get better. Our Pee Wee program, more kids out in Pee Wee than we've ever had. They've been successful. Our junior high, I was mentioning earlier, hadn't lost a game in two years. So, yeah, you, you feel like you've got it going the right direction, but, you know, you've got to continue to push, and, and, and our kids are doing that. What are the biggest keys now going forward to win these last three games, put yourself in position to have an opportunity to be where you want to be at the end of the year? <clears throat> got to be more physical. Got to be more disciplined. There's times where our physicality is good, and then there's other times where I question it a little bit, and I shouldn't have to question that. Um, Discipline at times, you know, some unwanted penalties at, at just crucial moments that happened to us against Sardis. Uh, and taking care of the football. 
we, uh, we turned the ball over five times against Sardis the other night. And against a quality opponent like that, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to beat anybody. But against a quality opponent like Sardis, you can't have that. So going forward, we have to take care of the football. That's, you know, that needs to be our main focus. Coach, really appreciate you taking the time to join us here this week on Keep It Up Marshall County Athletics, and uh, good luck to you and your group. Looking forward to seeing how you guys finish out this Yes, season. sir. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more here on Keeping Up Marshall County Athletics right after this. Welcome back in, keeping up with Marshall County Athletics, presented by Wenzel's Oyster House. Make sure to come up to Gunnersville, enjoy some great seafood and all different other types of foods here, right here at Wenzel's Oyster House. We appreciate their support for high school athletics right here with Average Joe's Sports Talk. I'm joined by some members of the Douglas football team now. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, tell you their name, what position they play, and what grade they're in. Uh, my name is Avery Thomas. I'm a senior at Douglas High School, and I play uh, left tackle and defensive tackle. My name's Logan Puckett. I play wide receiver and corner here at Douglas, and I'm a senior. Obviously, we just got done talking with Coach a little bit about the team this year and kind of how this season has gone. Take me back to the beginning of this year, 2-0 and start. You know, you guys started dealing with injuries very early in this season, and so how good was it to get off to that 2-0 and start, knowing that, you know, you guys had some guys that you had already lost and were going through some adversity very early in the season? Uh, it was very good. We uh, played Plainview in the Jamboree, and we – Lost one of, if not the most crucial part of our defense of Jacob Callaway, our middle linebacker, who has been a uh, leading tackler for since he's been in high school. And uh, we had uh, a couple of uh, younger guys step up when we played Susan Moore, uh, filling in at the middle linebacker position and then uh, other uh, positions as well. How important do you feel like, you know, I mean, being an older guy, having some of these young guys step up, them going ahead and getting playing time and getting this amount of experience very early in their high school career the way that they have been? It helps them a lot because with us, our freshman year, we kind of just got thrown out there as freshmen with only having about 20-something players. So them getting to watch us play and get older reps as games go on this year, it's helped us out a lot, helping us get off the field some every now and then, getting them a lot of reps. When you look at these last four weeks, I mean, obviously the competition has been really, really good. Y'all played some very good football teams. Y'all been in all of these ball games. What do y'all think is one of the biggest missing pieces in y'all coming out on top instead of, you know, being right there a couple points behind, you know, at the end of some of these games? Uh, I really just think it just comes down to execution at the end of the games, or really towards the beginning of the games. We have come out flat a couple of weeks and then really picked it up towards the second half, and then we have just haven't been able to crawl back entirely. He, he talks about some of these slow starts in the games. I mean, what do you feel like could, you know, got a bye week right here and then you got three of the biggest games of the year coming up. What do you feel like y'all can do to maybe get off to some better starts and get out in front of some of these teams where you're not playing behind? I think just shaking off our nerves early and just getting into a rhythm offensively would help us a lot. And we, we have to be able to pick up on a few things defensively a little bit better, getting into our checks and our calls going forward against these next couple teams. Coach mentioned, you know, a lot of you guys are having to play both ways. Y'all both talked about, you know, both sides of the ball and, and both y'all play different sides of the ball. Do y'all feel like y'all have gotten in better shape as the season's gone on? Has it gotten easier to play all 48 minutes in the game? Or, you know, how's it been having to play both sides? Uh, it, it was definitely tough at the beginning of the year, but it's gotten progressively easier. What about for you? It's gotten a lot easier, but we've been up in a lot of – man-to-man -man coverage and stuff on our last few games because they've had a bunch of really good players on their offensive side of the ball. So it's helped me get in a lot of really good shape over the last few games. Looking at the bye week, I mean, what do y'all feel like is one of the biggest things that y'all need to focus on as a group during this week to really get you guys prepared to go and do what you want to do over these next three weeks and put yourself in a position to have a chance to go play in the postseason? Uh, really just mastering the game plan. Uh, like I talked about, Scottsboro runs a triple option, which is incredibly tough, especially in high school. Uh, to defend and we just gotta everyone's gotta do their position if 10 guys do their position and one guy doesn't you know it falls apart I think us just watching film a lot and just learning a lot of teams tendencies and what they like to do on certain plays and downs is really going to help us and then us just getting back into a rhythm going forward 
You know, Coach kind of mentioned y'all have played some other teams where they their stars get to go over to the sideline, make adjustments, do things like that. What's the toughest part of y'all not coming off the field and I guess not being able to make as many adjustments during a football game as maybe who you're playing against at the time? Uh, I really just think it's uh, sometimes not even the adjustments, but just the getting down on yourself. Like you can, you'll make a mistake on offense, fumble a football, throw an interception, and you'll have to turn around, go back, play defense. You know, you ain't got your guys picking you up really because you're too focused on the game, and that can cause you to not only hurt your offense but also your defensive play of the ball. It takes a, a toll on us because, I mean, playing on both sides, if something goes wrong on one side, then it kind of carries over t to the other side if you don't get to really come off and look at where you went wrong or where y'all went wrong. So I think it affects us a little bit. But over these last few games, we've got very, very good about p picking each other up on the field and being very vocal. That's what I was going to say. I mean, you look at some of these last couple games. I mean, you guys are right there. You're in all these football games. And you got to feel pretty proud of the way that y'all have played considering the circumstances that y'all are having to go through where the teams y'all are playing against just don't have near as many guys playing both sides of the ball as you guys do. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, you have about 20 guys that can play against, you know, a team of 30, 40 guys, you know, and then you've got a whole series of injuries. You know, it, it's tough, but that just makes uh, – those close games, it makes you want to win them more and more the next games you play. So, How important do you feel like y'all's leadership has been from this senior group this year? You know, Coach really bragged about the fact y'all hadn't quit. Y'all playing hard in every single football game. You hadn't let the results really affect your attitude, things like that. How important do you feel like y'all's leadership has been and y'all's example to the rest of this team and kind of them taking on that same mindset? I feel like it's been very, very useful because we're a younger team at the moment with a lot of freshmen and sophomores and a few eighth graders, as Coach said. So I think us showing that a few things here and there are not going to really affect how we play and that we just play the same no matter the outcome helps them a lot, helps them realize how we like, how we like to play and how we want to build going forward. For both of y'all, I mean, what, what's the biggest thing that you feel like y'all have to focus on here over this last part of the season and, and the thing that y'all want to see, I guess, the biggest step y'all want to see this team take together over these last three games? Uh, like Coach Lyle said, just uh, some of the younger guys uh, stepping up, you know, filling roles that we have uh, open that they really proven to themselves that they can play on Friday night. And then uh, just us seniors just really uh, give it everything we have for these last few games. and. Let the results just happen. I mean, picking up where he left off with us trying to go into our bye week, I think just focusing on our game plan going forward and how we can spread out teams and get, and get the ball in space because we've got a lot of really good kids and we're down a few linemen as well. So I think us just going out there executing and then us just trying to let these younger guys get as many reps as possible going into the next year for them would be really good. Well, guys, listen, really appreciate y'all taking the time to join us, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Looking forward to seeing how things go for y'all. Yes, Thank, Thank you. Sir. We'll be back with more here on Keeping Up Marshall County Athletics right after this. Welcome back in, keeping up with Marshall County Athletics live at Wenzel's Oyster House. I want to thank Wenzel's for their sponsorship here with us each and every week, keeping up with Marshall County Athletics, allowing us to come in here. Make sure to come check out Wenzel's right here, right off the lake. It's a great setting. they got an outdoor patio, uh, bar area, all that type of stuff to be able to watch sports and, uh, you know, I mean, it's just a great place to be. So come out here to Wenzel's and uh, make sure to check them out. And we appreciate their support for high school athletics right here with Average Joe's Sports Talk. I'm joined by some more members of the Douglas football team. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, tell you their name, what position they play, and what grade they're in. Uh, name's Cooper Butler. I play defense end, outside linebacker, and then I play fullback, which in our offense called Sniffer. Uh, I'm a senior at Douglas High School. I'm also a senior at Douglas High School. My name is Gabriel Lawrence, and I play wide receiver and safety. <laughs> So just uh, kind of tell me about this year so far. I mean, you know, 2-0 and start to the year. Obviously had to feel good, and, and you guys had to kind of go through some adversity very early in the year already, losing some guys the first couple of games, even in a Jamboree game. And so how good was it to get off to that 2-0 and start and kind of have a lot of the positivity that was going on around that time? Uh, we had injuries to start out the season, like right off the bat killed us. And to have that 2-0 and start, it really helped us with the team morale. Like, 
have everybody going. Even the guys that had to step in, even though at the start of the season they didn't think they were going to play any, but they had to step up, step in 2-0. and We had all of our morale up. Everything was going good. And we just ran into a tough schedule. Yeah, just like he said, with the injuries that we had, and then we had other guys step up, and then we got the 2-0 and start, got us feeling good about ourselves, and then we had the loss. And then we just keep fighting. How much do y'all feel like the 2-0 and start has helped y'all to keep fighting in the sense of, you know, it's kind of showing, hey, this is what we're capable of. You know, when, when we play right, when we execute right and all that, we're capable of winning these games. How much has that kind of helped with you guys staying up and you guys continuing to battle and continue to fight the way that you have? I mean, it lets us know we can win. Because, I mean, all the games we lost besides the Gunnersville game, we've been in the game on like mm-hmm. one or two plays. It's a win for us. It's mainly just coming down to execution and eliminating our turnovers. And defense, get all your guys' hats on the ball. I mean, I think we've done a pretty good job of it, especially these past two, three weeks. But it can always get better. Everybody just needs to swarm the ball. Broken tackles can't happen. Yeah, it also goes to show a good thing to the eighth graders, again, that they can keep on trying with us and helping us out by us keeping on fighting and helping. Talk to some of your teammates about it, but I mean, do y'all feel like that y'all have kind of gotten in better shape over the last couple of weeks and it's not as difficult playing all 48 minutes being out on the field as long as you guys have been every game? Oh, yeah. I was like, I did not expect coming in, like, playing that much. I mean, I say set steps. I don't have to go to the sideline. I just stay on the field. <laughs> I mean, I like that aspect of it, but my gosh, it, it's hard to catch your breath sometimes, for real. <clears throat> yeah, it really keeps us, like, energi- or energized now that we've gotten into the season. We're not as tired whenever something happens, and we can just keep going both sides. With this bye week right here, I mean, how much are you all kind of focusing on recovery and getting your bodies back kind of right to be able to take on these last three games and knowing the workload that is kind of required of you guys out there on the field? Uh, we take recovery. We're taking that serious right now. A bunch of ice baths. Just kind of, I mean, taking it easy, but still taking it easy on those days. You still have your head in the game watching film. You're trying to study, especially for that triple option offense, man. It's it's a hassle because every guy has an important job, and if one guy screws up his job, the whole defense just goes down. It's like a bonfire. You just gotta keep it going. Yeah, back to that. We gotta keep the execution good, and then the injuries. We just gotta heal up and keep going. Um, you know, kind of tell me what what what's one of the favorite moments that y'all have had from this season so far? And, you know, obviously with it being y'all senior year, it's a year y'all are going to always look back on and stuff. So what's one of y'all's favorite moments of this season that y'all have kind of experienced up to this point? Uh, well, starting off 2-0, and and then as we've progressed through the season, just everybody keeping their head up as we keep on fighting through these wins and losses. Uh, I wouldn't say I just have a favorite moment, but just playing a game I love. I mean, that's all I can ever ask for, being healthy. I mean, I'm very thankful I'm one of the guys that's left. I mean, we've had so many injuries. I'm surprised I ain't one of the main ones getting injured. So, I mean, I'm just happy I'm still playing. That's what my favorite memory is. I'm still going to play my whole senior year. You know, uh, looking at the back part of this season, what do y'all feel like is the biggest thing that y'all have to improve on as a team that can take y'all over the top? And, you know, have you win these last couple of games, get you in position to make the postseason and be where you guys want to be at the end of this year? Uh, just. Healing again, the injuries, getting people back, and then execution when it comes to playing teams like Scottsboro and Boaz, just doing our jobs and winning. Uh, yeah, it just comes back to execution on offense. Like I said, limit turnovers, hustle the ball. And uh, like we just need to start like listening to each other more. Like When somebody gives us somebody coaching, we need to take it and just keep on going. We can't get butt hurt at each other. We got to go move on as a team. How proud are both of you of y'all's class, you know, this senior class and just kind of the way that y'all have led this group this year and the way y'all have kind of taken ownership of this football team? Yeah. I mean, I'm real happy with the grade I'm in. Uh, I think we, our entire grade, we're just a bunch of fighters. I mean, sounds corny enough, but I mean, there's not a guy on our grade that don't give his full heart out every Friday night. He does what, he, he does what he's supposed to do. He goes with coaching. Like, I think our senior group, it's well coached, but we're also, we're, we've really developed and become all men. Well, for you, man, how have you felt about just the leadership of this team this year and, and the way that y'all kind of handled 
everything that y'all have kind of gone through as a group? I think it's got much improved over the week because we started out, we didn't really know that we was going to have to go through all these injuries and then we just keep on fighting and then us going both ways and not showing any emotion about it besides just like trying to keep fighting. It just helped us. Well, guys, listen, really appreciate y'all taking the time to join us right here on Keeping Up with Marshall County Athletics. And uh, good luck to you guys. Really looking forward to seeing how y'all are able to end this season. Thank you. That's going to do it for us this week on Keeping Up with Marshall County Athletics. We'll be back next week with another episode right here with Average Joe Sports Talk.